We're in beautiful San Francisco Bay, across from the city, here in Berkeley, at the Berkeley Marine Center. And we're going to be installing a CF500 snap furrow on a Cal 20 that's been beautifully restored by its owner. The Cal 20 was a production keel boat from the 1960s. It's an ideal candidate for a CF500 snap furrow, and we'll be able to show you how to install it and all the key features that make it ideally suited for a boat similar to it that might be perfect for you. We're going to put a, a roller furler system on this Cal 20, and I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's going to make my life really easy when it comes to racing and when it comes to cruising. My decision to go with the Schaefer 500, is I was a little familiar with the Schaefer 700 because I crew on bigger boats, and I really liked it because it was a beefy roller. They're strong, and they were fast. They were, uh, you could get the sail out and get it in quickly, and that was important to me. So the 500 was my choice over the rest of them, and I researched them all, uh, and I felt that that was the strongest furler built, and for a Cal 20, again, it's a safety issue I want strong. When you get your Schaefer CF500 snap furl, it comes complete with all the parts you need for installation. There are two foil sections, a front and a back, all the individual parts needed for the assembly, a drum unit and torque tube assembly that covers the turnbuckle, an upper halyard swivel, and we also make available a special tool that can be loaned to you to do the assembly of the two foils, which has two rollers in it, which will force the extrusions together smoothly. In order to assemble the furler, you need to collect the following tools. Large pliers or channel locks, a Phillips head screwdriver, a crescent wrench, a 50-foot measuring tape, and a hacksaw. It's also helpful to have a roll of electrical tape handy when measuring the headstead. One of the first steps in unpacking the furler and getting ready for the installation is to uncoil the furler extrusions. Now a couple cautions in this regard. The bottom of the back extrusion on the CF500 is marked with a warning label that says don't cut here for obvious reasons. And then the other thing is when you're unpacking these, they're tied up in a coil with a um, tie wraps around them. You have to be very careful because it is spring loaded that you control the release of this and do this one uh, nap at a time as you uncoil it and let the thing come back and rest on the dock um, so it loses its memory of being in a coil and it is in a straighter line. The CF500 can be installed with the head stay on the boat or with it on the dock. Both methods of assembly are described in our instructions. It all starts by suspending the wire on the dock and tensioning it, and then we get our dimensions for cutting the foils. What we're looking for here is the length from the bottom turnbuckle toggle to the top of the wire below the swedge stud. So this is a swedge stud, and this is where the wire begins, and we want to get our dimension from that point. So we tape, tape measure on here securely, and then we go to the bottom end and measure the overall system length. Now we're measuring to the bottom of the head stay. Now notice that the turnbuckle has been closed completely so that we have the shortest possible head stay. This will help avoid any contact between the upper swedge stud and the foil itself. Now our measurement point for what we call our ML dimension is right here at the bottom of this T-bolt at the top of the toggle. We have a clip that's going to go through the toggle and that's going to be our measurement point. So in this case, it's 22 feet, 8 and 1 quarter inches. Becomes our ML dimension. And that ML dimension we deduct for the torque tube and drum at the bottom to get our cut length of our foils. So now we've established the ML dimension in our instructions. And then we're going to deduct 14 inches from that for the cut length of the foils. The reason for that is that the foils attach to the top of the torque tube and drum and that's going to rest something like this and that 14 inches is what needs to be cut off of this dimension in order to have the correct length for the foils. Now we need to transfer our cut dimension to the foils. One helpful hint is to put the tape measure at the bottom end of the foils, do not cut end, all the way up the foil until you get to your cut dimension. In this case we started down here, you see the warning label and then we've come up around in a loop because the stuff is still in a big coil and we're, our measurement is 21 feet 6 and a quarter inches, which is right here. So we're going to mark that as our cut length. 
and then we're going to repeat this procedure on the other foil so that they're both cut to a very close dimension. With the measurement marked on the foils, go ahead and cut the foil with a hacksaw. Once the foils have been cut to length, we bring them to the head stay and we begin the assembly. Bring the top ends of the foils onto the wire and snap together. Usually you can get this started by hand, but if the extrusion's tight, we provide a little cardboard roller to go over it, and you use your channel locks with some tape tied to them to make sure you protect the foil, and then you just squeeze it as you go down. And you'll hear it click as it progresses. I'll take this down for about 36 inches to get the assembly started, and then we'll come back and put the top cap on the top of the extrusion. Once we have 36 inches of the foil snapped together at the top, we add the top cap. So this is a plastic cap that goes over the foil and secures the two screw holes in the top of this. The two screws go down into the front foil, the forward foil, and it simply snaps on like this, goes over the top of the foil, and then we secure the two fasteners down the top of this system. Once the top cap is installed, then we continue the installation, snapping the furler together as we go all the way to the bottom. Now that we've installed the furler over the head stake, we can remove the tension supporting the head stake and get ready to assemble the final parts before we put it back on the boat. The next step is to install the swivel and the drum unit. To do that, we take the swivel first, and this is up on the swivel, and this is the bottom of the foil. It goes over the lower end of the extrusion and the wire, and is put on the foil, and we slide it up out of the way so we can install the drum unit. The drum unit has several parts pre-installed at the factory which need to be removed. The first is this lower clip, which has two fasteners. The second part is we need to remove the clamp from the top of the torque tube, and that requires this Allen screw that's provided in our kit to be removed. Now don't worry about the fasteners, these are captive up at the top cap, so they won't fall out and go in the water. So with that done, we can lower the turnbuckle into the tube. Now we slide the torque tube and drum unit up, and it covers the front side foil, and then the stainless steel clamp feeder will cover the back side where the slot was cut in one of the extrusions. So you can see there's a keyway right here that matches up with the slot that's been milled in the extrusion shape. That goes over like so. That holds the pieces together and we retighten the fasteners that are in the torque tube. Now that we have the clamp on the torque tube, which is clamped onto the foil, we're going to put the lower fastening clip onto the toggle. So that goes in the lowest toggle, clips in like that, and then we slide the head stay up and put this back in with two fasteners, one on each side. The final operation is to install these three shackles, two of which are on the swivel, and one of them goes onto the tack fitting of the drum, like this. And we'll put one of them here on the bottom of the swivel. And this gets attached to the sail. And the final shackle gets attached to the top of the swivel. And that'll be the attachment point for the halyard. At this point, the furler is complete and ready to go back on the boat. With the furler installed on the head stake, it's time to adjust the head stay length. That's done by removing the clamp and sliding the drum unit up over the foil to expose the turnbuckle. So turn the turnbuckle until you have the proper amount of head stay tension. And then we're going to reinstall the uh, cotter pins in there. Okay, now we lower the drum back down and reinstall the clip at the bottom. We're going to raise the extrusions up on the head stay and replace the clamp in the top of the torque tube. Screw those fasteners in. 
tight and nice so that they're the gaps are even all the way around. And what this is doing, this is holding the extrusions together, preventing them from driving down on top of the swedge stud, and it provides us with a real nice entry for the sail buff tape. One small but very important detail, by the addition of this little clip, which comes standard in our kit, this is called a pullback device. It's a little stamp metal flared kit. And this will go against the mast up at the top of the mast like this and create this angle away from the head stay angle. And that gives the swivel the mechanical advantage it needs to stay put as the furler is being rolled. Now we're going to feed the sail end of the stainless steel feeder and bring it up to the swivel and shackle it on. And then we're going to raise the sail. One of our final steps in installation of the furler is to figure out where the control line is going to lead to the cockpit. So in this case, we're going to put this small bracket that has a bullseye onto the cage. It clips onto the cage. So we're going to take this cage off. And this bracket is conveniently set up to clip on and use the same hole spacing. And then we replace the fasteners and put the drum back on the unit. And that gives us the perfect location. We want a bullseye right here that's 90 degrees to the drum and about that spacing off the drum and right in the middle of the drum. And that'll make the line spool up and down just the way we'd like it to. So now we have the retriever line through the bracket and the bullseye which centers it. And then we're running it down here to one of our spring-loaded stanchion lead blocks. And then we're now low to the deck and can run it back to one more fairly before we get to the cockpit. At this point we're going to test and unroll the sail and roll the spool up and make sure everything's operating smoothly. Now that you